We are gonna start with sensor spot retouching. One of those really simple, but really common problems. And in, in case you're wondering, in case you've ever, on some images seen sensor spots off your camera, but then other ones you've not seen them and you're going, well, hold on a second, I didn't clean my sensor, what happened to it? Quite often the reason that you don't see them is because you're shooting with very shallow depth of field. If you're shooting on a lens at f2.8, f4, maybe even f5.6, you're likely to not see any sensor spots, which is kind of nice, right? You just, all that stuff just goes away, but you stop it down to like F16 or F11 or F22, let's go, let's go crazy. Um, suddenly all these spots show up and these are all literal little specks of mush that are on your sensor that are showing up in the photo because your depth of focus is so grand that they actually start to show up. And so that's why you might see them in some photos, but not in others. So the photo that I have here, Let's see here. This one was shot at, where is it? F13. So pretty um, pretty much a lot of depth of field going on here. It's on a micro four thirds sensor. So F13 is really a lot of depth of field. And if I zoom in close, let's go up to the corner here. You can see just how awful those spots are. This sensor was filthy. So definitely uh, something to be cleaned up in here. Now we're going to do this cleanup I'm not going to clean up the whole image because once I get started on it, at that point it just gets boring to watch. But uh, but I'll I'll get rid of a few of them. <clears throat> Pardon me. And there's a couple little tricks that I want to show you in here on finding those sensor spots because sometimes the sensor spots can be they can be elusive. They can be a little hard to spot. And so uh, no pun intended. And so um, we're going to look at some tricks for revealing those a little bit more. But to start, let's just start with the real basics. How to clean them up. In DxO Photo Lab 3, you have a little Band-Aid icon here, very appropriate. Click that Band-Aid icon, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time today. <clears throat> and I've just realized a problem. <laughs> I have set my mouse cursor to be extra large so that you can see it. However, that poses a problem because, um, because then my, my repair brush is much bigger than it's supposed to be. So I'm not gonna be able to use that today. So apologies to anybody out there who wishes that my cursor was bigger. I can't make it bigger or it won't make sense when I'm doing the retouching. It'll be way bigger than it's supposed to be. So that's just the way this demo is gonna have to go. So again, up here we have the little Band-Aid icon that brings up my retouching cursor. It also opened up a small dialog down here in the lower left that allows me to choose between my modes, whether I'm going to repair or clone. Cloning is a pretty straightforward kind of a copy and paste of a portion of the image, whereas repair is more like an actual rebuilding of a part of the image. What it does is, and you'll see this as we get, uh, especially into the more advanced parts of the demo, it samples texture and color data from one part of the image and rebuilds the part of the image that you're cleaning up without just simply copy and pasting the data. Copy and pasting the data, cloning the data can tend to look very repetitious, especially if you have a lot of texture on an image, suddenly you'll start to see repeating patterns. But the repairing actually rebuilds based off of the source data as opposed to simply copying and pasting it over. So for the most part, we're gonna use repair. I might go to clone a couple times in this demo. Um, it's not planned, I don't actually know if I will. It really comes down to how I clicked on a certain thing, whether I think that mm, maybe a clone would work better there. But for the most part, I'm gonna stick with repair. You also have three sliders under here, a size slider that changes the side of your size of your repair brush, the feathering slider that changes the amount of feathering. So of course that's how soft the edge is. If I go really hard edge, then I'm likely to be able to see some of the edging of that. If I go really soft, then I could end up with, um, with areas that aren't quite healed all the way. So imagine if you will, I had a really big spot right here that was the same size as the center part of that brush. If I clean that up, stuff on the outside edge of it may not get picked up. And so the feathering you want to use a bit judiciously when you are doing repairs. You probably don't want it completely off, but you are most likely also not going to want it up at 100. And then there's the opacity, which can be very handy for doing things, for cleaning up things like uh, creases in the face, wrinkles, and so on, where you don't want to completely eliminate it, but you just want to reduce it. And so this will allow you to uh, reduce the 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 emphasis of a wrinkle or a crease without completely eliminating it, which can end up looking a bit unnatural. So those are the three controls that you have. The size you can control by holding down the command key on your keyboard and scrolling the mouse. You can see the, obviously the cursor self changing as well as the slider moving. Feathering you control by holding down the shift key and then scrolling your mouse. And that gives you control over the feathering in there. So that you can do a lot of your control without ever having to go back to the sliders, which is um, obviously makes things a lot faster to do. 
With that said, I'm going to zoom into 200% on this picture to make it nice and big in here. And we're gonna start by getting rid of some of these spots. So let's go to that healing brush, that healing tool. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to shift drag to make the feathering a little bit less. And I wanna make sure that the primary area of what I'm trying to fix fits underneath that dot. And effectively, let me just start with the easy route. I'm gonna hide the mask, so I'll come back to that in a minute. There's a spot right there, we can see that. I just, I click on that and effectively it's gone. It's, it, that's really it. There's a one there that's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger, click on it and it's gone. Hold down the space bar to, to change to the hand so that I can pan around the image. There's another one here. Now this one's a little bit odd shaped. So I'm actually going to kind of drag a little bit to paint a little bit on there. And once again, just like that, it's gone. There's a tiny one right there. I don't need to repair the entire huge area. So I'll just scroll down, scroll down, make it smaller, click on that, and it's gone. And this is effectively what I wanna do. Pan around the scene, make my brush, adjust it as I go, make it a little bigger, a little smaller, no bigger than it needs to be, and just click, click, click to get rid of each spot. Now, I said that I'd show you some tricks on how to make these spots more visible, because as we pan around here, you go, well, there's some spots like, maybe I see, is that a spot? I'm not quite sure what that is. If you go to the curves tool, there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is how I like to do it. Go to the curves tool, the tone curve, and do something really wild. Let me let me zoom out of this. I'm gonna do a really dramatic S curve in here. And as I move this around, and there's no one right position to put this in, but as I move this around, you'll start to see, well, here we go, all these spots showing up in there that might've been a little bit hard to see otherwise. Let's go back into 100% not draw a line across the whole image. Let's go back up to 100% in here. Well there, I've just made a mistake and this is perfect because I can show you how to correct something like that. I guess I didn't hold down the space bar before I clicked, trying to move too fast. I don't know if you can see, there's this weird mush line right there. That's because somehow I, I just added a big line of correction that I don't actually want. If I show the masks, if I click on this to show masks, I will actually see the line that I just drew. So now that's easy to select that and just hit delete to get rid of that. Um, all right, let's hide those masks again. And let's go back over to this part of the scene here. And so again, now with that up, I'm gonna drag this around a little bit, just again, to really make those spots show up. Now, look at how many more spots we're seeing now. I mean, it's almost embarrassing how dirty my sensor was, but look, look at all of these in here. If I turn off the tone mapping, now that it's off, you're like, oh, now, now I see them. Now I see them. But before that, it's kind of, you know, kind of hard to see some of those. So this is just one of those little tricks to help you find the spots. And you can do the retouching while this is on, right? So I can go in here now and let's clean up that spot and that one there. And oops, missed a spot. Let's get that, make that a little bigger there. Let's get rid of that one. And I'm just going to do a whole bunch of these. And then I'll turn off the curves. And of course, once the curves is gone, the repairs are all still going to be intact. And so this is just a very effective way to go in there and see the spots that you might not have normally been able to see. So there's a bunch. There's clearly still a bunch more. I'm going to get rid of that one because it's really bugging me. I turn off the tone curve and the repair work is intact. The curve is gone. And so now I'm back to normal. And again, just an effective way. It, you know, you might want to go the other direction. Just try, you just try different things. You just do kind of extreme adjustments to the image. And as you're doing it, yeah, yeah, look, okay, there's another one. Oh, there's another one there. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, there's another one. And that's, that's the idea. So as I um, alluded to earlier, there is this show masks function, which allows you to see all of the masks that are in there. It's entirely possible through the process of doing this, especially when you have so many of them, that you end up re-cloning or recreating a spot from another spot that wasn't there, but now you're adding spots and you're like, what, what is just going on here? If you show the masks, then this allows you to, as you click on each one of these, to see exactly where the tool has chosen to sample from. And you'll notice as I click around these that it's not like it's always 50 pixels to the right. Right, it is a different position, a different angle, a different distance from each spot. The software is effectively looking at your photo as you're doing the sampling, and it's trying to determine the best place to sample from. And it's doing that entirely automatically, but sometimes it gets it wrong. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that well, and we're gonna see this more as we get into a more complex image. But if you, uh, let's just say, 
All right, see, there's a spot right here. Let's say that when I had cloned or healed that, that it had, um, let's see here. Let's say that it had sampled from here. And so now if I show the mask, hide the mask, suddenly I've just recreated that spot. And if that happens, you go to heal something and they're like, wait, it just added a spot. What is going on here? You show the mask, so you go, where's that coming from? Oh, look, it's coming from right there where there is another spot. Let me move that over. And now that's going to take care of that problem. So one of those reasons that you may want to go in and do that. Also, as you start to pile a lot of these on top of each other, being able to show the masks will help you to understand where the pieces are coming from, uh, allow you to separate the ones that are kind of overlapping with each other. And again, we're going to see more of that in a moment here, but that is a really, really powerful tool for verifying where those clones are, or heel marks are coming from and be able to adjust that if necessary. So that's the general idea. I don't need to clean up this whole image. You get the point. You don't want to sit and watch me do this whole thing, but um, but this is a very effective way at going in there, finding those spots and getting rid of them, and off you go. So with that said, I'm going to jump over to the questions real quick, see if there's anything in here, and then I will jump back into the demo. Um, let's see, Frank Brennan says, why is the box mode size feather opacity? Okay, so that little box in the corner not showing up in my photo lab when I click on the repair icon. If you, you can hide that, I think. Yeah, this little guy right here. So see this little icon right down here, the little Band-Aid in the lower left corner? That will hide and show that box. So at this point, I could let's get out of the repair mode, go back into repair mode, and yet that box is missing. Lower left corner, there's the repair. Click on that, and that opens that dialog. Hopefully that helps you out, Frank. Um, how do you undo? Command Z undoes. Command Z undoes. Colin is asking for a good sensor cleaning kit for home use. I don't have a personal recommendation. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. There's somebody I've been on podcast with that has a favorite set. I can't remember. I, it's just something you're going to have to Google. Sorry. Um, there's not a particular kit I recommend. Honestly, I... I very rarely do this myself. Um, I go to a lot of trade shows. And so what I end up doing is bringing my cameras with me and manufacturers of trade shows usually are there to, well, they'll clean up your sensors for free. Um, I've sent them in before. Not to say that you can't do them at home. You absolutely can. It's perfectly safe, done properly. Um, but I don't have a personal recommendation for you. Sorry. You're gonna have to Google that one and see what other people say. Okay, here's a great question. Patrick says, my repair tool is really, really slow. What can I do to speed things up? My hardware is more than fine. I'm actually going to address that um, on the final image that I do in here, but I'll just tell you right now that, yeah, uh, when you're working on a raw file, especially, and you have a lot of repairs going on and a lot of other stuff, it can slow down. And so you can either disable some of the other adjustments going on temporarily, um, but what you're going to see that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to export out a TIFF file. I'm going to do my retouching as kind of a final stage on the TIFF file. It's not ideal. Obviously, you would rather not do that, but sometimes that's just what I run into. And I got a pretty robust machine here too. Um, but sometimes those more advanced repair jobs, they just it's just too much, and you, uh, you just, it's the best way you can do it is get get out of the raw space. Uh, Gary Graham saying Command equals the Control key. I think that's right on PC. Um, I don't. That's probably right. Probably control will change it. So what he's asking about is when I'm in here, if I hold down command on a Mac and I change the size, uh, scroll, it changes the size. It's probably control on a PC. I'm sorry, I can't verify that, but it's easy enough to find out. Just jump in there, start pressing modifiers and scroll the mouse and see what happens. Um, Leonidas, does the effect, oh, does the effect stack? So for lower opacity is selected, the effect could be controlled more precisely. Correct. I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So you can change the opacity of any healing brush and you can change it after the fact. So after I've painted it, I can select it, go into the sliders here and adjust the opacity and drop that down a little bit. And then if I wanted to source data from another part of the image and layer that as a slightly um, translucent repair, you could stack them like that. I've never actually tried that before, but yeah, that totally would work. Totally would work. Um, Paul Ross says, when you've got a series of spotted images, meaning like this, can you copy and paste the repairs? Unfortunately, you cannot. That is a common feature request. Um, let's see here. John Keller says, might mention moving around the enlarged image with the upper left box. That's a great point. So in here, what he's talking about is what I've been doing is holding down the space bar, 
to pan around the image, um, which for some reason the cursor is not updating on my screen right now, but we do see up here that I've changed to a space bar. But you could also use the navigator over here in the top left corner to navigate around the image. That's a, that's a very effective way to do it as well and helpful when you've zoomed way, way in. Okay, let's move on. Thank you for those questions. I see there's more in there. I'm going to um, undoubtedly not be able to get to all the questions, but I'll certainly do my best to do so. Let us now move on to the next photo. Next photo shall be this portrait. Let's get this set up in here, zoom out of this. And looks like I forgot to reset that. So let's do a quick reset on her. And we're gonna do some repair work. So this time I'm gonna do more than just blemish repair. This is gonna be more of a all encompassing retouch. So I'm gonna do a, a fair number of things to, um, to this lovely lady's face. I'm going to start with a little bit of color balancing, which is not what this webinar is technically about. So I'm gonna go through it quickly, but I'm showing it here because I think it is very, it's a very effective tool for skin retouching and skin retouching is not just about getting rid of blemishes. Now I have shown this technique I'm about to show you. I've shown this in great detail in some of the other webinars uh, where we are talking about the new HSL tool, the new hue saturation luminance tool. So if what I'm about to show you isn't clear to you, if you haven't seen it before and you're going, what, show me more, go back to the DxO webinar archives of which you can find on YouTube or on the DxO webpage or on my website at photojoseph.com slash DxO. They're all listed there as well. And you will find um, webinars on this where I go into great depth on this particular feature. But I'm gonna do a lightning round of this level of repair because I think it's still worthy to look at. I'm going to, let's zoom into one-to-one. -one. That might be too close, but let's just try. Yeah, it's a little bit too close. Let me zoom out of this a little bit, but it's 75%. And oops, 75%. And <clears throat> pardon me, a little water here. What I want to do is balance out the color in her face. You can see, as everybody does, a little bit of uh, splotchiness to the colors on their face. I'm going to use the HSL tool to isolate her skin tones and then use the uniformity tool to smooth those out. So the way that I isolate, my trick for doing this is to select a range that is roughly skin tone. We're gonna start with this orange in here and take the saturation all the way down. That has desaturated her face, but we can see that it has not quite picked up everything. So that means I need to refine that. I'm gonna refine that by simply expanding the range of what is being, uh, what is being affected. And I'm gonna try and isolate this to her face, but not her hair, which since she's blonde is definitely a trick, but we're gonna get pretty close to it. So I'm gonna go right about there-ish. Clearly some of her face is selected, I know. I mean, some of her hair is selected, I know it's not perfect, but this still works. So there what I've just done is I have roughly, not perfectly, but roughly isolated her skin. Maybe go a little bit more, try and get a little bit more of this color under her neck in there. Pretty good, okay. So now I've got that and now let's take off that desaturation because that was just so that I could see the range that I was selecting. I'm then gonna take the uniformity slider and crank that all the way up to 100, which smooths out the colors, makes the colors in that selected range more uniform. In this case, they're a little bit too red. She's got a little bit of a red tinge to her. Clearly, we are not all looking at the same color calibrated monitors, so it might look perfect on your screen right now. It might look super red on your screen right now. There's no way for me to know what you're seeing, but I'm gonna adjust this so it looks good on my screen, which right now means I'm gonna take this and push the hue rotation just a little bit towards orange. If I go too far, she goes green, don't want that. Just a little bit towards orange to balance that out, make it look a little bit more natural. And now what I've got is a face that is maybe a little undersaturated. Bring up the saturation a little bit. There we go, and as I toggle that off, we go from a slightly splotchy face to something that is more toned and, and natural looking. So, perfect. That's all I wanna do there, just because it is an important first step for my workflow to uh, cleaning up the face. All right, now let's go back into, let's actually zoom into 100% on here and pan over and start doing some retouching of her blemishes. So she's got a few little spots in here that we wanna take care of. Maybe a buter mark I may or may not wanna get rid of, a stray, uh, a strand, stray of, strand, str stray, strand of hair. There you go. Stray strand of hair, say that five times fast, that I wanna get rid of. And interesting here, she has a beauty mark under her eye that I don't wanna get rid of, but there's, I don't know if it's stray makeup or if it's just 
maybe even a brew. I don't know. There's something right next to it, and that's kind of bugging me. So I want to get rid of that without getting rid of the beauty marks. That's going to be a little tricky, but we're going to do it. All right, retouching tool. I will start with a very small brush in here. Oops, hold on the right key. There we go. A very small brush. I'm actually going to zoom in more. Let's zoom into 200% on here to really make sure I'm seeing things closely. Grab that, and I'm just going to start getting rid of spots. And so just like before, I am either just clicking or clicking and dragging. Um, let's get rid of that hair. We'll make this pretty small and just follow that hair. Those can be a little bit trickier. You got to hold that mouse steady. I'm not using a, a tablet, a Wacom tablet or anything like that. Boom, gone. As always, if I want to know where that repair came from, I can hit show masks and it shows me where it's cloning from. Here's an example where you might need to fix it. Let's just say that it had sampled from up here. Now suddenly what I've done is I have added more hair instead of gotten rid of the hair. That's no good. So that's where I would say, no, 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 show me the masks. All right, there we go. And we would fix that. Oh, actually, I, I moved the wrong one. That was particularly clever. Let's do that again. There's the destination. There's the source. Let's say that I did that. There we go. There would be an awful example of it. There I have totally cloned the wrong area. So that's where I would want to go in manually and say, oh, no, sample from there instead. Much better. Good, good, good. Okay, let's keep on going. Get rid of a few more spots in here. I'm going to come back to the beauty mark one. I'm just going to get rid of some of the other big ones in here. Again, as I'm panning around, just very quickly going through, adjusting the brush size as I go, um, cleaning up as much as I can in there. Okay, let's take a look at this, this spot under the face. Let's zoom in even more. We're going to go to a 400% zoom. And, you know, it's really worth pointing out at this level of zoom. I mean, who's really going to see this? But, you know, it's bugging me. I, I want to fix it. So, Let's do what we can. I am going to make this a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to take my feathering down, not completely hard, but I'm going to go for a pretty hard edge feather there. And let's just see what happens here. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and show the masks for this. I think that'll be useful. And kind of paint around that there. Actually, that, that worked out great. Honestly, I was expecting to have to do a lot more to it than that. But that worked out fine. So there we go. Okay, well, getting that brush size to a the right feathering amount, that makes a big part of this. That's a big part of this. Drawing around it. And let me just undo it and do it again and point something out. I'll turn off the mask this time. Where I position the cursor is really going to matter, right? If I'm too close to the, to the original birthmark, the original um, beauty mark, and I do that, it actually worked out pretty well. And the, you can kind of see this. It's like a little bit of the feathering around it. It's kind of too much, um, but I might be able to even fix it by just moving this, move my repair mark up a little bit. I may not have to repaint it. The source and the destination can be independently moved, right? So I can move this back in and go, I was brushing too close to the blemish. Let's move it out a little bit and away we go. And it's looking pretty good. You can also pile up repairs. So yeah, I'm really splitting hairs here, but maybe there's a little bit of kind of shadowing we'll call it under here that i'd like to kind of clean up a little bit so i'm going to just paint another mark under here and let's see where that's sampling from sampling from over here maybe i grab a slightly darker part of the skin and maybe i take the opacity down on that a little bit just to kind of blend those together a little more i mean i think i think it looks pretty good okay all right we're gonna we're gonna call that done on there um so lots of different things I can do to retouch, but it, retouching skin is again, not all about just using the repair tool. I started by doing the smooth, uh, the color smoothing out, but let's do another thing to her face. I'm going to zoom out to about 200% for this next part. Uh, actually, let's go out to 100%, there we go. On her forehead, you know, she's young. She's got tiny, tiny little spots on there that I wanna get rid of, but I really don't wanna go in and manually retouch every single little spot. It doesn't really need that level, it just needs a little bit of smoothing. So I'm going to use the local adjustments tool and I'm going to use a control point, drop this on her forehead and make this a little bit bigger in here. And then I'm going to use the blur tool. Now I have to be careful because if I turn up the blur too much, the whole thing gets blurry and that's obviously not what we want. I just want a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of blur. So let's bring it back down to zero and just touch it up a little, just, just a little bit. Like even six might be a bit too much. But even if that's a bit too much, it's okay because what I can do is blend the blur along with the original by going over here to the, where are we? 
<laughs> it is, what is it called again? Uh, vignette tone curve, color rendering, white balance, HSL. Where is the, I'm sure, repair. No, it's not repair. Um, hello, how is it gone? Oh, local adjustments, there it is. I didn't scroll up far enough. There's my local adjustments palette. There is the control point that I just added. I can actually rename this. Let's call this forehead. This allow me to keep track of things as I add more and more to it. I can then take the opacity of that one and drag it down a little bit. So I've got the same amount of blur, but I'm now blending that blurred layer, blending the blur with the textured skin underneath it and making it look a bit more natural. So see now our forehead, it's not like Barbie doll plastic clean. It's still got some texture to it, but I've gotten rid of a lot of those little tiny dots. It's just another tool in the arsenal. It may or may not work for you and the photos you're working on, but it's just something else to try and consider. Since I'm in there, I may as well do a little bit more to her face. Let's go ahead and um, not go full screen, not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and also uh, let's clean up her eyes a little bit because I think that's an important part of this. I want to kind of make her eyes pop a little bit more. So let's go into local adjustments. I'm going to create a new mask, drop control point on the eye, make that a bit smaller. And let's take the sharpening up. There we go. Let's take the sharpening of the eye up a bit. Oop, a bit too much, a bit too much in there. And add a little bit of saturation, get some of that lovely blue coming through. We're looking for um, saturation, bring that up a little bit. And pretty good. If I want to see what the mask looks like that I'm working on, you can see that's that. Again, not a primary part of today's demo. We've done lots of videos on local adjustments. If you're not familiar with local adjustments, go watch some of those old webinars. But it's effective to show and how it incorporates in with a portrait retouching job. So let me, uh, I'm going to add another one over here to her far eye. That far eye is not actually in focus. It's quite shallow depth of field, but it's still worth adding a little bit of pop to it just to really kind of bring the eyes out a little bit. Um, and I like it. I like it. One more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out of this photo. I'm going to add another mask over her whole face in here and just warm it up a little bit. We got a little bit of warmth on there. Now, the same mask, I want to add a little bit over her arms and the rest of her here. So I'm just going to do that. It's actually getting a little bit warmer still. There we go. Um, add a couple more control points just to kind of pick up the rest of her skin tone in there. There we go. And now we've got that added in place. And we're digging it and it looks pretty good if i do a compare to the original we can see how much matte more smooth her skin tone is we've gotten rid of a lot of blemishes obviously i didn't do all of them again once you've seen how to do it you don't need to watch me do them all but we've cleaned up the stray hair we did a little texture cleaning on the forehead used a bunch of different tools to go about fixing the portrait um, and of course there's more we can do but that gives you the idea all right let me jump into the questions again before we move on to the final step in here Malcolm said, I may have misinterpreted what you initially said about opacity. Is it best to reduce opacity when repairing spots or was that just respect to retouching facial wrinkles? In general, um, I usually will leave the opacity at 100%, meaning that it is completely eliminating hiding the spot behind it. But when you have a spot that you don't want to completely get rid of, a facial wrinkle being one of the prime examples, you just want to reduce it, not eliminate it, then lowering the opacity on that is very helpful. And you can lower the opacity before you brush it or after you brushed it, which is very good to know as well. I brush that on and then I go, oh, is it 100% or 80% is too much? I can drag it down, slide it back and forth and find that right that right spot on there. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's see here. Uh, Chris Mead reset, reset tone curve doesn't just hit reset all. Reset all will undo all the repairs. I did a reset for the tone curve. Um, I just turned that off. That's all I did there. Did not do our reset all. What happens when the wrong amount of feathering is used? Um, show what happens when the wrong amount of feathering is used. Sure, let's, why not? If I, where'd be a good example? I guess I could do that on the face here. Let's do that. Let's go into 100%. Let's go into 200%. We're getting really close on there. And it's a little bit soft. It may not show up. It may not be a bad, feathering here if I do it at zero, but let's just try it. Let's go to zero, oh, wrong size, wrong slider. Let's take the feathering down to zero and make the size of this a little bit smaller. And if I just clone there, okay, so that's actually blending really well. I think we're gonna see a little bit more of that in the next picture. I'll try and remember to turn off feathering on one of them so you can see it. This photo, because especially because here it's a little bit soft focus, it's just blending together really nicely anyway. Um, let's see here. 
someone um, Eves or Ives Eves, I guess, um, confirming that Mac on command is PC. Oh, PC is Alt on PC. It might be Control in this case because we Alt goes to something else. Anyway, you'll figure it out. You will figure it out. Is repair better in raw than TIFF mode? It's not going to make any difference to the effectiveness of the repair job when you go to TIFF because we're not doing anything with the raw sensor data that hasn't already been done. So you're not going to lose anything by doing that. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, Larry Harder asking, can you use DxO as an adjunct to Lightroom? Absolutely. Yeah, from Lightroom, you can send to DxO. There's actually a whole plugin architecture to allow you from Lightroom to send it to DxO and then it sends it back into Lightroom again. Um, that's installed automatically when you install um, I just keep seeing, I don't mean DxO, I mean Photolab. When you install Photolab, it allows you, it installs a plugin for Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC, the cloud version, does not have a plugin architecture, so you can't. But Lightroom Classic absolutely has that round trip built in, which is pretty cool. Um, Sheriff's saying, is it possible to repair all the points in one shot? No. No, there's no like automatic clean up all the points option, unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. Can I show after or before? Um, I did, so I think we're good on that. Can you recommend using a stylus for retouching? Do you ever recommend? I used to use a Wacom tablet all the time. I think I don't do this type of work personally that often, so I don't mind not having a, a tablet on my desk anymore. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just my workflow. I don't do that much. But if I did it all the time, then I would definitely want a stylus. I used to do more retouching like that, so I had a stylus. I just don't that much anymore. Um, how do you show the masks? There's that show ma oops, show masks button is always there. So just click on the show masks button, and that will show the masks that you have created. Is there a keyboard shortcut to zoom? Command plus and minus will zoom you in and out. Um. Can you repeat what you did on the woman's forehead? I just, I added a control point, added a little blur, and then over on the local adjustments, dragged that blur uh, opacity down a little bit on that layer. Brilliant demo, I thank you, Olivier. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, last question, Mike's got a great question here. When you correct someone's face, how do you let people seeing the image know that it's no longer real? That's a great philosophical question. What's real i ask you what is real i think it's worth pointing out and i will address your question <clears throat> i think it's worth pointing out i saw this argument online recently and i had to walk away because it's one of those where you go <laughs> not getting involved um people will often say oh once you photoshop an image that's not real the photo is no longer real anytime you retouch the image it's no longer real um not like back in the old days when you shot on film have you ever looked at Ansel Adams' work? I think most people would consider Ansel Adams a real photographer. If you look at his prints and you go, wow, that's amazing. Do you have any idea how much dodging and burning was done in the darkroom? How much of what we do today in Photoshop um, or Lightroom or Photolab or whatever app you're using, how much of what we do today was done in the Lightroom just painstakingly more difficultly? Um, Retouching's always been there, whether you're talking about whether you're talking about literally with a brush doing spot tone retouching with brushes down to triple zero brush size and a little palette of gray inks and you're painting on your print to being in the dark room and dodging and burning. Um, retouching has always been a part of photography. So anybody who says that once you start playing around with the image in, in whatever app you're using, it's no longer real, ignore them. What Whatever you create is as real as you want it to be. Now, back to your question, Mike. When you're working with people, when you're working with specifically with clients, I think it's very important to have the conversation with your portrait client of what their expectations are. Some clients want to have the result where they look like a Barbie doll at the end. I've never had one of those, but apparently some people do like that look. Most clients expect a certain level of retouching, but you should talk to them to see what it is they want. Or if you are a well-known portrait photographer and you basically are creating in your style and they're paying you for your style, then it's important to let them know what the expectations are. And for me personally, what that means if I'm working with a portrait client is I will tell them up front that my method of working, and I'm happy to do something else if that's what you, uh, what you want, but my method of working is to deliver what I consider to be what I would call an idealized version of yourself. So let's say that you're a 50 year old woman and you certainly have some wrinkles and spots and so on on your face. If you want me to make you look 20, 
that's not what I do. And I would probably turn the client down to begin with. But if you want me to make you look um, like the best version of yourself, that's what I do. I will lighten wrinkles, just, just, just soften them a little bit. Because let's face it, people wear makeup, soften the wrinkles in their face every day anyway, soften the wrinkles a little bit. We're not eliminating them, we're just softening them. Any spots that are temporary, so a pimple, for example, those go away completely. If it's a temporary spot, get rid of it. If it's a permanent spot, a beauty mark, for example, I will ask, because beauty marks are very personal. Would you like me to remove this or would you like me to um, diminish it? Or usually what I will do, I would, that's not a question I would ask up front. I will do what I think is right, which might be diminishing it a little bit if it's something that's kind of distracting. Um, but never remove it completely. If the client then comes back and says, you know, could you get rid of that for me? No problem, I'll take care of it. But um, usually I just, I like maybe reduce it a little bit. Soften the skin, take a few years off, but don't try to take decades off. Just present the idealized version of your client and that is what will 99 times out of 100 make them perfectly happy. Again, very personal thing. You gotta work with the client, see what they want, but that is my approach to deliver the idealized version of yourself. Okay, with that said, let us move on. I'm going to move to the next image, which is object removal. This one is a bear. This one's gonna be a bit harder. All right, I have this uh, lovely waterfall picture here. Lovely-ish, it's all right. And I wanna get rid of this tree branch here. The biggie, right? The tree branch is over the water is gonna be easy. Where it's intersecting the wall here is not gonna be so easy. Now to the chap's question in the beginning, I don't remember your name, sorry, um, who had asked about the software being a bit too slow sometimes when you really are doing heavy retouching. This is where generating a TIFF file can be very, very handy. So what I would do in this case is um, first do my, any, any kind of exposure enhancements that I'm going to wanna do. In this case, there really isn't much. Um, maybe I'll go in and do a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve in there. Let's just kind of dramatize it a little bit, make that a little bit more contrasty. It's not going too dark in the shadows. Actually, you know, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get rid of the detail in the wall in here. Um, I'll bring the highlights up a little bit in there and I don't know, add a little saturation perhaps. Um, let's see here. Color accentuation, let's take my saturation up a little bit, really make the greens pop. I'm also gonna crop it because this thing down here is just absolutely bugging me. So let's go into crop, let's not care about the original aspect ratio and I'll just crop it like so and close that. And cool, there's my image, good enough. So now I want to create a TIFF file to do my retouching on. Down here, you've got your export to disk button. I'll open this up and I'm going to render out an 8-bit TIFF. I'm not even gonna worry about doing a 16-bit because I've already done the color work that I wanna do. If I felt like I needed a 16-bit, I could, but I'm not gonna bother. 8-bit TIFF, not changing the size. It's going to go into the original image folder, which means it's going to automatically show up in Photolab right next to the original photo. I can do any renaming, whatever that I want. I'm not gonna resize it, of course. Uh, so enable resizing is turned off. I click on export. It'll take a couple of seconds. There's a progress indicator down here. It renders out that TIFF file and that's gonna show up right next to the raw. Now that I have this TIFF file here, I'll be able to do my retouching a bit more quickly. The performance is going to improve. So that is what I'm going to do. Let us zoom in and get started in here uh, do, 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 and there we go all right so here's my recommended workflow let me zoom out a little bit recommended workflow for an image like this this part's easy we know this is easy so i'm going to save that for later i want to get rid of the hard stuff first if i was to just take the brush and you can already imagine this and just kind of draw over a bunch of branches and then draw over this line here um, the odds of it finding the right area to sample from to correctly fill in the water and the wall and that edge, and that edge is the tricky part, uh, pretty much impossible. So I'm not going to try and do too much at once. I'm going to start small. I'm going to run down the edge of this wall here, and I'm going to retouch just the edges. And then I'll come back and I'll retouch the inside and the outside, meaning the uh, mossy wall and the waterfall. The waterfall area clearly being the easiest one in here. The mossy wall, pretty easy, but that edge, that's the hard part. So that's where I'm gonna start. So let's zoom back into 200% on here, get nice and close. And I'm actually gonna start with this one right here, which is absolutely gonna be the hardest spot because this wall right there is at a bit of an angle. 
And um, the only kind of angle to that is right here, which means I really need to sample to fix this, I'm gonna to have to sample from here, which means I'm gonna to have to make this a really small sample. So let's go even bigger. Let's go into 400%, um, really zoom into this thing. And let's focus on that. All right, so got my uh, my retouching tool, my repair tool. I'll bring up the feathering just a little bit on here. Not too much, just a, just a touch. Change my size. Now something you may have noticed, which I think is quite cool about this software, the size of this brush is not measured in pixels. This size doesn't, the brush itself, as I see it on screen, doesn't change size as I zoom in and out. So if I need to get finer detail in here and I zoom way, way in, look at my brush size didn't change. I mean, that brush size right now is literally, if I shrink it down, three pixels wide. Okay, call it like three and a half pixels wide. But look at the size down there, it says 30. That's just, that, I can't zoom in anymore, I'm at 1600%, but that is not relative to the pixel count at all. It's just a number. And so this allows me to get really, really precise. And look, I can go like sub pixel level in here. That's crazy. Actually, what happens if I do that? I don't even know. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too small. <laughs> but I, I can do really, really fine retouching in there by zooming in super, super close. So I think that's an important thing to, um, to understand of how this works. Okay, let's go back to 400%. And, um, oh, I got the right spot right there. Okay, so this is the spot that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, again, focus on this crossing line right there to begin with. And um, to take my feathering, it's actually probably fine. Maybe a little bit more. Eh, let's just try it. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a straight line down there. And let's show the masks. And it pulled from way over here, which is completely useless. Oh, pulled from over here, where is this? Oh, that's the one that I just drew. Let's get rid of that before. Um, it pulled from up here, which is obviously not working because it's there's no edge. So I'm gonna move it down to here and just kind of nudge this around till it starts to fill that in. Now I can already tell it's a bit foggy in there, which is okay to some degree because this edge is soft, right? We see the kind of fine hairs, if you will, of the moss in there. Um, but I think my feathering is too high. So let's take my feathering and turn it down a little bit. And you can see there, as I do that, um, it, it makes a difference. So if I take the feathering kind of a little bit lower, I'm gonna get a cleaner edge in there. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's hide the masks. Okay, we're off to a good start. It's not done, it is not done. But you can see in here that the crossing line is gone. This is too dark in this area here. This side's perfect but this is gonna need a little extra work in there. So I might, I think I'm gonna come back to that later actually, because I've gotten the big part, which is that line. Um, so I'll come back to that when I'm working on the water area. And let's just go on to the next part of this. So let's do again, let's see. So here, um, I'm probably gonna to wanna to heal from somewhere down here. So let's just kind of draw over that line and again, show the masks and let's choose a different part of the image to heal from. Yeah, I feel like this could be bigger. Let me go a little bit bigger on here. Do that again. And I'm hitting delete, by the way, to, to get rid of it if I decide it, I wanna try it again. Just hit delete and start it over and then find just the right position for that. Maybe take the feathering down a little bit more. That's actually pretty good on there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, um, that's a tough one because like a whole curve thing going on in there. Um, hmm, let's see here. I might end up for this one, not worrying about the, I don't need to cross the line. It's just this spot there. So I think what I'll do actually, let's try this. Um, I'm just gonna drop a spot. Let's get rid of the feathering altogether, make that a little bit bigger. Um, oops, that doesn't change the size there, I knew that. Try that again, make that a little bit bigger, feathering is down, and I'm gonna switch this over to clone and now take the feathering up. That might actually work out better for that spot. Yeah, there we go. That works out better for that spot. Okay, and we could go a little more over to here. Oop, too much. It's tricky, it's tricky. No one said it was easy. Might actually end up needing to do multiples of these. Yeah, all right, I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. And then I got a little extra one in there. Let's make this a little bit smaller and paint a little bit up into there. Move that out. Change the feathering on that a little bit. We're still in clone mode in there. There we go. There's a little retouching there. Keep in mind, we're at 400% here. So zoom back out, any little weird anomalies, 
probably not going to see. I'm going to call it a day on that one. Let's move on to the next one here. Um, let's get rid of this spot here. So I'll just do a straight line down there. This one, because actually, let me undo that. Um, or just delete it. Because there's nothing else around, I think I can get away with cleaning up a little bit more at once. So let's make this a little bit bigger, make the feathering a little bit right about so ish. And let's do a um, let's set this off of repair or clone back to repair. And I'm going to do kind of a cross hatch in here. And let's see if that works. Um, that may or may not work in there, but I think that worked out okay. Still got a little bit to clean up. Okay, good. We're going to move on. Excellent. This is a bigger one. But let's see if I can just wipe all of that out at once. We're getting into some areas of the scene where I've got oh, my opacity's down. That's my problem. Let's go opacity back up. I'm going to go back and fix that. Um, actually, that looks out. That looks, yeah, it looks good right there. Okay. And I recognize there's some graying happening. Don't worry. I'm going to come back to that. Um, let's take that one. The opacity was down. That was the problem there. That's better. And I think that one, yep, opacity was down as well. There we go. Let's clean that up. Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Moving on, the last big one in here. Let's zoom out of that a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. And let's just try this. Plus, we're going to try and get rid of all this at once. This is such a big area. I think I'll be okay with this. But if not, we can always undo it. Um, yeah, do that. And I can better zoom out of this a little bit and get a little too close here. Oop, wrong button, 200%. Now I've lost myself. Where was I? There we go. There we go. To whoever said use the navigation tool, you're absolutely right. That is a great way to go. Um, and did I delete it? I must have deleted it. Well, that was brilliant. I don't know how I did that. Let's try that again. Draw over this whole area here and there we go. Okay. Now this is not going to be able to sample from the top. We're going to sample from the bottom. We're going to move this over. Um, ooh, looks like that one could be a little trickier than I thought because of that curve that's happening in the wall. So, all right, well, that said, let's delete that. Let's do it again. This time I'll be a little bit more precise about it, not try to get quite so aggressive at once. <laughs> so here's one where the sample area has chosen to sample from up here, which is grabbing that branch. So that's obviously not going to work. So let's bring that down to the bottom. And there we go. That's going to work and move that over like so ish. Add a little bit more feathering into that. And I think we're good. Let's see here. And that spots. Yeah, I don't need to fix that spot. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I thought I fixed this one. Uh oh, did I somehow. I somehow cleared. What did I do? I lost my brush things. Some did I delete? I don't even know what just happened. I deleted everything. How did I do that? These are all gone. Well, that was brilliant. Well, let's just do a couple of undos and see if it comes back. I have no idea what happened there. That is the strangest thing. Um, I think we could safely call that a bug. Uh, the joys of live demos. Um, I am undoing, undoing, undoing. And um, hmm. oh, they're coming back. They are coming back. Okay. Redo. Redo. Oh, that's where it went away. Undo. Magical. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I have no idea how I did that. Okay. So whew, well, we're back into back on track here. There was that. Was that big one okay? Nope. That was the big one. That was the last one that I did that I wanted to get rid of. Maybe I somehow selected all of them. That is very curious. I will certainly be telling the folks at DXO about that. Okay. Back over to this. Let's do this one more time. Make that, uh, let's see, we decided we couldn't go too aggressive on here, but we can definitely get rid of some of that branch there and there. We just need to clean up that edge and let's zoom out a little bit. We're too close in here and that should work out if I put it right about there ish. There we go. Cool. Cool. Okay. So we've got the edge. Okay. It's not perfect. I could do a little better job in some spots, but we got the edge. So now, Let's get rid of the branches in here. So this is going to be easy, right? So this is easy. I just grab that brush in there and I'm going to do some pretty big areas at once. Let's go over this whole branch in here and up there and around here and let's get that and get over that and over here and here and maybe there and have it done to there. And um, I want to do all this at once. Sure. Let's go over to there and I'll call it a day at that point. Okay. So now. 
let's zoom out. We can see that the, it's on clone mode. Let's go back to repair mode there. Uh, I wonder if I was in clone mode on that one too. And let's, let's select it. There we go. Switch that to repair. There we go. Much better. And now I'm going to move that down to make sure I'm not getting any weird shadowing. And that's pretty clean in there. I think that's pretty good. All right. Maybe add a little bit more feathering to that as well. I think we're good. Okay. Oh, well, it looks like we picked up something weird happening over here. Where's that coming from? It is picking up some other part of the tree. <laughs> Always curious, isn't it? There we go. Okay. Now let's move on to another one. Let's do this part of the branch here. Get rid of that and that. And get rid of some of that. And go over here and up to there and up to there. All right. That's once again chosen from some odd area down here. So I'll drag that over to the side, pan that over. Super. Okay. We definitely get some weird shading there we're going to have to work on. I'm quite sure where that's coming from. I guess it's pulling from in here. So I might. Hmm. So this is interesting. So what's kind of going on here is because there's all this other detail around there, it's kind of pulling some of the surrounding data. So maybe this was not the best choice. Let me delete that. And I'm going to get rid of all of this branch, but I'm going to stop here and then work on this piece separately. Let's do that. So let's get rid of this. See, it's, it's an, oops, went off, off stage there. Let me undo that. Delete. Went off the reservation. Let's go back into here, up to there, all right, there. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's get rid of that piece, that piece there. I'm kind of retracing my path with the mouse so that I can continue to draw up to here. Make sure that I have everything all around it. There we go. And again, it is picking some bizarre portion of the scene to work from. So we'll just move that up to here and zoom back in. There we go. That's pretty good. Maybe add a little bit more feathering into that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So now I've got this last clump here. We are out of time. So I'm going to make this quick and then come back to your questions um, and see if I can answer them. So for this, I would want to go in pretty close because again, remember I have cleaned up the very close edges in here, but I'm still going to have to get in really close to that. So let's just see if I can get lucky and do this with one fell swoop. Probably not, but let's just make this very slightly feathered. Let's hide the masks and let's see if I go in here. Let's see if I can get lucky here. Let's see just what I can do. Go to that whole chunk there. Um, show the masks. Where is it pulling from? It's pulling from down below. Zoom out and it's pulling from over there. Oop, that was the wrong one. You get a lot of them going on. It can get a little confusing sometimes. I know. I know it can. Um, where was it? That was it. There's the source. Nope. So yeah, so you get a lot of them going on and it can be a little tricky to find the source. You can actually click on the source. There we go. Got it. Pull that up over here. Okay. We're getting there. Now we do have some shading there to clean up, but we are really on the right track. Let me just try this. I'm going to try a big blanket. See if I can get how much of this shading I can get rid of at once. Oh, I see that bright spot under there is uh, it's because I was cloning instead of um, repairing. So we're definitely going to have to fix that. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, this spot right here, that's funny because that's one where I had it accidentally set to cloning. That one there. Yep, see it was set to clone. Set that to repair. Ah, look at that. Remarkably better. We're getting there. I still got some cleaning up up here to do, but you get the idea. We've made massive progress here. The image is not finished yet, but we are definitely down the right path. Um, a little bit more fine retouching to do, and we will have removed that frame. So that is what I wanted to show you today.